Hey everyone, so today we are going to be dealing with the cloth physics within Blender and uh, I'm going to show you how you can use the cloth um, intersecting with other objects in your scene. So in this example here we have a rock that's hitting the cloth and this creates like this really soft, dynamic and um, premium feel. And this is something that we often see in uh, 3D, um, whether that's being in Cinema 4D or Houdini or uh, Maya, etc. So I thought I would give my take here in Blender as well. And I really find uh, to have a good cloth simulation in Blender, it's all about the materials and lighting, but it's also about um, really setting up these settings within the cloth uh, which might cause a bit of a long baking time, um, but it's it needs to be highly detailed. Uh, you cannot get this look just with a simple plane and a few subdivisions. Uh, you need to be testing out, uh, and yeah, yeah. So let's just get straight to it. So um actually this setting here before i run this one through with you guys um i think it will be easier if i started with a much simpler setup so actually just going to show you how i do this simulation and the tricks that i follow and then afterwards i'm going to show you this specific scene here with the specific shading and lighting and so on so i'm going to hide this one for now and uh, yeah, as you can see here, this is just uh, the background from the HDRI. Um, let's create the effect. So I'm just adding a plane just to make this one more visible. It's easier for you guys to see. And then we need our object that we are going to be colliding into something. So for this effect here, I thought we can just use a, a cube. And uh, I'm just going to subdivide it. And it um, doesn't need to be that much, but I can just do this one here. So it has a few subdivisions and shade it smooth. So it, and we can scale it down also. It's not important what this object is to showcase the, um, the thing, uh, the, the simulation. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, be moving the object into the cloth itself. So I'm pressing I and adding a, a oh, this one should have been on, uh, on zero um, of the first frame. And then I'm going to the last frame here and I'm just going to drag this one out here. I think this will be fine. And we can move our backdrop just a bit further back. So, oh, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. And then I'm pressing T and uh, just uh, the interpolation is set to linear. So now we have this ball going from the center of our scene and to back, to the back. So now we can add our object, uh, our plane, which is going to be our um, cloth uh, simulation. So I'm going to scale this one up, rotating it on the Y axis and then I'm just going to place it just behind this ball here. So what are we going to do now? Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to be subdividing this plane as um, the cloth in Blender really needs a few subdivisions for it to work. So I'm pressing right click and then subdivide it and then I'm, I'm just going to subdivide it by a hundred. So you will see later on for the actual scene, the other scene I did, I think it's one more uh, subdivisions on this one here. And um, so it's a bit more um, subdivided. But for now, I think it's it's fine for our purpose here. So um, right now we're going to, under the modifier, we're going to choose the cloth physics. And uh, under the cloth physics, we have these settings here. So first of all, to really get like the effect that we want, which is having a cloth that is wrapping around our object and really have a lot of detail within it. 
um, we need to be dialing these settings down here. So, and turn off the damping because we don't want any friction or stiffness in the uh, cloth itself. And under the bending, I'm also going to turn the bending uh, quite down and also oh, this one quite down. And the damping all the way to, um, to zero. And the air viscosity, we can also dial quite, uh, yeah, quite a while back here. And uh, the um, speed multiplier, we can also turn down. Um, and under the collision part, we're going to turn on self-collision. And let us just, yeah, we can just use these settings here. Uh, for this purpose, it's not that important. Uh, uh, like with the collision quality and the cloth quality because we're going to be dialing that up for the final render. But under the field weights, we're going to turn gravity off so it doesn't fall straight down, but it stays in place. And now I actually think we are about there uh, to bake down to the 150 frame, which match our timeline. And uh, yeah. The, the last thing that we need is that right now the object itself would just go through the plane, but we need to be adding a collision to this object here so that it collides with our plane here. And actually, I want to turn the, I think it's under the collision, the distance I'm going to be dialing uh, uh, down also so that uh, the object uh, gets closer to our cloth before it interacts with it. So I think right now we can actually try to bake this one out and see what it looks like. So it goes fairly quickly as you can see and uh, that's because it's not that heavily uh, subdivided and the quality settings from the cloth is not set that high. Uh, this baking is going to take a lot longer for the actual scene that I have uh, showed you in the thumbnail and that and the one that we're going through later in this tutorial. Um, but yeah, let's see what this looks like. So if I hit play here, you can see that actually it looks fairly nice. Our object here is interacting with the cloth and it looks realistic and really nice. But as you can see, it's almost like a, someone is catching the, the ball and this can also be the effect that you want, but I, but I would really like to have, um, you know, the, the cloth surrounding the, the bowl itself here. And so how are we going to do this? This is one of the tricks that I wanted to show you. I just delete the bake. Um, using a force field. And uh, the way that we're going to be using this force field is that we are going to be using it as a, in a negative direction, which means that uh, the cloth will be attracted to the center of the force field. And uh, we can dial this one down a bit and, uh, and just turn this one on, just like this. Uh, you can experiment with the size of, of uh, the force field. And then this is going to be set to negative. Uh, let's try 250,000. Um, I have found out with Blender you need quite a high strength settings uh, when using force fields. Uh, yeah, so the trick that I wanted to show you is that we can, because we want the class to affect the object itself, um, we want the force field to kind of stay within the object itself. So it's not really that uh, huge of a trick, but if I click on this one and then shift click on the object and parent it by setting control P and then clicking object, now the force field will follow the uh, object around so that the cloth is always trying to go to the center of our scene here. So what this means for the baking is, okay, oh, let me just show this one. Uh, when I bake this one out, you will see that it has quite a dramatic effect on our cloth simulation. And then this is really the way that I achieve the other simulation in the, in the other scene. Um, you could also add a turbulence or do other things to give the um, cloth even more uh, randomness. And uh, yeah, you can play around with the force fields. But I actually found that just parenting 
he falls filled here the to, to the object really sells the illusion. So when I play this one through, we should be able to see here that the cloth the cloth is actually going towards the the force field and not just waiting and, and colliding with it. So as you can see here, we already start to have our objects kind of surrounded with the with the cloth itself. So this is actually the the effect that we are going after and um, you put put on a subdivision modifier here, turn it up a bit, or you can shade it smooth and all that to make it really nice. Now it's also quite uniform because the ball is the exact same size all the way around and the cloth is a square. And so, so we get this really kind of, um, yeah, similar and uh, geometry like effect here. Um, but this is, Actually, the the only thing that I did with the other scene, so I'm just going to show you now um, how I how I did this effect, but but in a much more detailed way. So I'm going to be deleting this one and also this one, and then let's turn on our um, original scene here. Uh, it might take a bit to show up here also. Um, because it's a, a fairly dense scene. But here you can see we have our scene and um, here we have the force field that is just following the, the rock and the rock has a, um, it's a yeah, animation going from the center and to the back just as I showed you before. And uh, yeah, so this is actually the only thing that's, that's doing this illusion here and um, under the force fields, it was set to minus 500. Um, so it's quite a lot more, but I also found that it needed to do that with, with the amount of subdivisions that I had here. If I just go back here, you can see it's heavily uh, subdivided, way more than, uh, than the other one that I just showed you. Um, let me just turn on solidify, we don't need that. Um, but when I go to like frame 80 again here, um, you can see that it has a lot of detail within it. So the settings for this cloth is actually set at the quality steps at 20, uh, the speed multiplier at uh, 0.5, air viscosity was set down a bit, the stiffness is a bit more here than the than the one that I just showed, it was, was still fairly low, 2.5, and uh, the bending was also set down 0.1. And then the damping was turned off, uh, besides the bending here. Um, the collisions is also in a quality of 15 with uh, a small distance here. And um, yeah, this is actually all uh, there is to it. Um, and of course, the, the object itself here also has a collision with the thickness outer also set down a bit just so that the distance from the cloth to the um, object seems realistic. Um, so yeah, this is this is the scene, and this is the way that uh, that it was achieved. Um, so, what about the shading? So we can. I'll just show you quickly what I did. So the cloth itself is fairly uh, easy. I did a bit of roughness and a bit of sheen to make it uh, like a fabric, and then I just plugged in a nice texture with the. Uh, a bump and a distance set down just so we get these sort of like wrinkles and you know really kind of more textured uh, material fabric here a bit of clear coat also to give it that extra layer of, um, of uh, material uh, but that's that's basically all and um, for the uh, oh yeah for the rock here also um, it's just uh, a rock from uh, mega scans and I just made it white. So in, in reality, it's more like a like a brown rock, but I just, I didn't like the look of it with the uh, cloth. So I just, yeah, I just made it kind of gray, whitey, so it was more like a chalk, I think chalk uh, uh, material. So yeah. Um, and uh, for the lighting, uh, I used an SCRI. 
uh, set to 1.75. So quite heavily bumped up. Um, and I had a spotlight up here just with the spread set very low. So we only have this narrow spread here. And uh, this way it can also work with a more dramatic look if I set the um, SDRI down to 0 0.3. You can see that this is also a really cool uh, light that I also like very much myself. Um, this I would also highly just, um, you know, uh, approve to be a, a cool and interesting look also. Um, so yeah, so this is all for today's tutorial. I know that it's not that complicated compared to some of the other ones that I did, uh, but I just wanted to show you that the cloth within Blender has gotten a lot better in recent years and, uh, you know, it's just about these settings uh, and you will get the same effects as in Cinema 4D or any other tool. Um, just a lot of subdivisions, a lot of tweaking and experimenting with the settings and you will get something that looks quite nice, just like this. Uh, and realistic. Just remember the small details. That's what makes this one realistic with the cloth and with the stone and the colors, the white and the purplish color here. I, I I think fits very nice uh, with the scene. So yeah. So that's all for today. And uh, yeah, a massive thank you to the patrons out there. Um, you remember that you can always write me on my Patreon and uh, you will get the project files uh, from all of these YouTube tutorials. Um, and also just, yeah, leave a comment down below and hit that like and subscribe button. And yeah, um, if you want to support the channel, that's the way that, that you have, that you're going to do it. So uh, I'm happy for anything you guys can, can do to help out the channel and I will try to see if I can put out even more tutorials that I already aim. I've been a bit sick for the last couple of days, so that's why I haven't been that active. Uh, you might also notice that on my voice today, but I'm back now and uh, hopefully we will go through a lot more tutorials in the future. So um, yeah, thank you for today and uh, yeah, see ya, bye.